Here's a hard truth. A lot of what beginners hear about aquariums when they first get into the hobby is just wrong. Not a little bit wrong, dead wrong. In today's video, I'm gonna break down five of the most common myths that proliferate this beautiful hobby. I'm gonna tell you why they're wrong and I'm gonna give you the advice to follow instead. So if you like these types of no BS videos, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Help support my little channel. Let's dive in. Myth number one, run your aquarium for 30 days and it's cycled. This might be the most common bad advice in the hobby. People think cycling is simply tied to a calendar, like you just fill a tank up, wait a month, and everything magically works out. There's a lot more to it than that, but the good news is it's not that complicated. Aquariums only cycle when there's ammonia for the beneficial bacteria to eat, and then, given that they have an ample food supply, they need time to reproduce. That could take a month, but it could also take a lot less if you use the right bottled bacteria and provide a stable ammonia source. The nitrogen cycle is biology, not a timer. Want to learn everything you need to know about it? Check out my dedicated cycling video. That's linked down below in the description. Myth number two, more light equals better plant growth. This myth destroys more tanks than anything else. People crank their lighting thinking it'll make their plants explode with growth and instead they create an algae farm, get frustrated and quit the hobby. Plants don't simply want more light. They want the right amount of light relative to the available nutrients and CO2. Too much light without support stresses your plants and ends up feeding opportunistic algae, which can then take over. Lower intensity light with balance always beats high intensity light with chaos. If you're gonna crank the light, make sure you also provide ample CO2, macronutrients, micronutrients, and water changes. In essence, with high light comes great responsibility, so respect the balance. Myth number three, red plants need tons of iron. This one just needs to die already. If you want the no BS simple truth about how red plants actually work, check out my dedicated video in the description, but here are the basics. Iron does not turn plants red. Red coloration comes from a pigment called anthocyanin. These are pigments that plants create when nitrates are limited and PAR is high. Anthocyanins don't even use iron directly. Yes, iron is a vital micronutrient that your plants need, but dumping extra iron into your tank won't magically turn Rotala bright red. Just like in fitness, pounding protein shakes won't make you shredded. What actually works to enhance reds is strong light, stable CO2, consistent macros and micros, and for our advanced hobbyists, nitrate limitation. That's it, stop wasting money on bottled iron. Myth number four, plants replace your filter. To this one, I've just gotta say, hell no to the no, no, no. But in all seriousness, yes, plants do help with nitrogen uptake, but they're not your entire wastewater treatment facility. Natural ecosystems have huge volumes of water, currents, soil bacteria, runoff, and entire biofilms working together. In your home aquarium, plants cannot replace proper biological filtration. This is especially true in a high-tech CO2 fertilized tank. Plants are part of this system, not the whole system. A good filter stabilizes your tank, increases oxygen, supports bacteria, and helps the entire aquarium thrive. And this is not to mention the countless benefits of circulation and flow. Don't skip the filter because you're cheap or lazy. A big filter will only help your artificial glass box. Myth number five, water changes remove beneficial bacteria. If this were true, every rainstorm in nature would just wipe out entire ecosystems. Beneficial bacteria don't live freely suspended in the water in any sort of meaningful concentration. They live on surfaces, in your filter media, substrate, wood, and stones, not just floating around in the water. Water changes stabilize your tank by removing excess waste and excess nutrients. In nature, this would happen naturally from runoff and precipitation. Your aquarium isn't nature, it's a closed system, it's a glass box. Skipping water changes doesn't protect bacteria. Your bacteria is gonna be fine. Change your water, put the work in, your fish and your plants will thank you. These myths stick around because they sound simple and they encourage shortcuts rather than educating yourself and learning the little bit of basic science that it takes to maintain one of these bad boys. So if you found this video helpful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. And also drop me a comment down below. What's a myth that you were told when you first got into the hobby that you now know is dead wrong? Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys and gals next time.